What's going on, everybody? We're back for another episode of the Multiverse Experience Podcast. If you have been paying attention to the channel, then you will know that this is a special episode for two reasons. Not only do we have an interview right now with Sabi, aka Breaking Free YT on Twitter, he has a YouTube channel, two YouTube channels, in fact, so be sure to check the links in the description. Follow right now, subscribe to Sabi, but the episode will only be the interview, and that's how we're going to be doing it from here on out. If you scroll back to season two episodes, you see some of them becoming two hours long, two and a half hours long, and much more. So I want to say thank you so much to everybody who has been watching those videos commenting on them, smashing that like button. Um, I notice it. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to all of the engagement in the coming episodes. So the whole point is to shorten the episodes, make them a little bit more specific to what you're looking to watch. So from here on out, I'm going to be uploading the interviews with my guests, as well as executives in separate videos. So the news and overview of what's been going on in the multiverse x and multiverse web 3 space altogether will be in different videos so thank you so much for the support let me know what you think about this um, if you missed the announcement it'll be in the previous video but i will also slowly but surely be re-uploading all of the interviews that i've had with my guests this year so thank you to all of those guests who have been willing to come on the show and share their thoughts opinions perspectives can't wait to re-upload those and get more people hearing your thoughts but uh, stay tuned this coming monday i will be interviewing mark the ceo co-founder of ethium so be sure to subscribe to the multiverse experience podcast that's all i got for you right now I'm going to get out of here so we can get on with the discussion with Sabi. Be sure to drop a like, comment down below, and be sure to follow Sabi on X. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, everybody, how's it going? As you can see on the screens in front of you, we have Sabi, a.k.a. Breaking Free YouTube in front of us here for the oh no i lost count is this the fifth episode i think this is episode number five of multiverse experience podcast nonetheless sabi it is spectacular to see you again since we met in person in paris over a year ago at this point or actually close to just about a year ago at the last x day but uh, sabi is a crypto lover youtuber an engineer which i'm eager to hear more about your background as well a holder, trader, and also you're a part of the team at Morningstar Ventures. So an impressive uh, 4.12 thousand subscribers on YouTube, putting up some awesome numbers and just on the threshold of 2,000 followers on X, a previously known as Twitter, which we just got done talking about. Drop a comment. Go ahead and follow Sabi on Twitter or X. Get him over that 2K mark. Sabi, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, my man? Hi, hey man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, it's nice to see you too. Yeah, it's been one year. Uh, it's it's funny how time flies. But yeah, Crazy. I'm glad to glad to be on your show. And uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, to have a chat about crypto and crypto and stuff. Yeah, and stuff. There's a big asterisk on the end stuff. These episodes can get a little bit into the weeds on tangents and so forth. I already kind of plugged your channel once, but if you're watching this video, uh, head over to Sabi's YouTube channel. I mean, he's posting videos really often and just giving really sound advice, kind of acknowledging both the downsides, the upsides, but also the neutral ground that we don't have these crystal balls. Recently, he made a, a tweet about getting a crystal ball from AliExpress. So Sabi might have a crystal ball over there, but it may not be the top shelf crystal ball. But dude, I just want to kind of start there. Um, when did you start making content on the internet? Um, what form was it? And what kind of just like, why did you do it? Why did you start? Ooh, yeah, yeah. So I started first time in 2021, 13th of January. I think that was the oh, first, wow. my Two first days. video. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I've worked in, in corporate jobs my whole life. Um, 
like 11 years, as you mentioned, I'm an engineer uh, by graduate and, and I also worked as an engineer since 2011. And uh, yeah, then I got into into trading, into investing, but mainly stocks and forexes. So that's that's that was my first steps. And then I think my friend actually recommended crypto, uh, which I started to you know just check on it. I, I I already knew about Bitcoin. I knew about Bitcoin for a very long time. I had colleagues who invested in 2016 and so on. I just somehow didn't I didn't have that click, you know, when you just just dive in. But then I was and also it was the the pandemic and everything. And I think we were also very bored, you know, and and just just trying to get something new. Let's see what to do, what not to do. So I was always I always enjoyed making videos, but I made them for my families, you know, like vlogs about about traveling around, you know, like funny, funny stuff. And I was thinking maybe I should I should make a YouTube channel as well. So I had one my my on my personal personal one. I started to make some content. Uh, that's where I tried to 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 learn editing. I made content about motorcycles, about motorcycling, because Ooh, uh, nice. I'm also I a I was a biker now in Dubai. It's, <laughs> I'm not anymore. But up until last year, I I, I had a motorbike and uh, nice. yeah, we were touring a lot. So uh, I made lots of content about that. And then after after diving in into crypto, you know, buying my first first a uh, tiny bit of bitcoin and ethereum so on so on i started to learn stuff about it and lots of things made sense and i was thinking that maybe if i learn something i just make a video about it and i just post it you know and it's a like a step by step process you know it's mm. not like hey i'm going to tell you what's up it's more like i learned today this and i'm going to i'm going to just just tell you this. So my first videos weren't even about crypto, to be honest, because I, I was I wasn't confident enough, or maybe I was feeling that I don't know enough. However, I knew about about the investing part because I was doing it for more than two years already, you know, um, and and the trading part, you know, and candlesticks charts, so on. So my first videos were, were about about eToro, you know, and uh, about about trading to one to you know the platforms where you invest, you know, some companies, so on, so on. But I didn't really feel, you know, like I, I it was it was something which wasn't very interesting. Maybe it wasn't very new. Mm. I don't know. But uh, yeah, after after starting to create content about crypto, I was much more motivated because, you know, you truly understand something when you can explain it. Mm, and totally, and yeah. that's that's where that's what also motivated me, you know, to to learn more. Uh, because I knew that I had to explain it, you know, and if I can't explain it, then I don't understand it. So, uh, yeah, I found this new kind of hobby uh, with, the, with the camera. Maybe I'm a bit narcissistic, you know, wanting to be on camera, but uh, it was it was a good, good thing. And also it was a new type of experience, you know, uh, versus working in a corporate job. I mean, then you get a comment, you know, an appreciation. Or, or or anything anything nice you know that somebody was helped by your information i think that is that is the most evolving honestly uh about creating content especially in this in this industry yeah absolutely yeah. and whenever you're so well spoken and you have a background such that you do i mean i i I would never call that narcissistic. It's it's the platform, but I, I get you as well. It's like, you know, you put stuff out there and people make their comments. Um, nonetheless, though, um, thanks for sharing about kind of your intro, some a little bit of your background there. Um, so it sounds like you got your feet wet with the crypto world first buying Bitcoin and Ethereum. Is that right? Yeah, 100%. So what kind of first, it sounds like you heard uh, some colleagues maybe at work talking about it, um, maybe as you were working there, but was it speculative or did you kind of know what you were getting into? Like what, why did you start buying cryptocurrency when you did? It's funny because when I think back, I don't remember, I don't recall the feeling that I'm going to, I'm going to be rich with this. Okay. Mm. I was thinking... I'm going to make a bit of money, okay? Because I didn't invest a lot of money. So I was just, I think the part of, of like uncharted territory 
about this, you know, that also drove me to into this. And mm. then obviously once you're in, you get this flood of emotions of FOMO, FUD, of uh, this, I don't know, this plus 30% overnight and and the minus 30 as well. Uh, therefore, it just it just takes you down the rabbit hole, uh, reading the white papers, learning what is a white paper, uh, learning about there are so many projects, you know, uh, MetaMask, for example, I mean, it was like, I cannot say how many times I was standing in front of uh, MetaMask, you know, sweating uh, whether the transaction went through or not. So I think this is a is a very new experience and and it just it just took me, you know, so yeah, yeah. obviously, as I said, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, they are the biggest, most famous. That's how I started. But uh, yeah, uh, after that, I just started to to find new and new coins, obviously from some uh, influencers whom I don't watch anymore. <laughs> I stopped watching them after a couple of months, but that is also a, a bit of a journey, you know, until you you find those people, you know, you want to you want to follow and you think that, OK, this is this is my style of content. Yeah, man, not not only are you not watching them, but I bet they're out there watching you, right? <laughs> I don't Just think so. <laughs> be, be right. Embrace the narcissism to some degree. It's a joke. Okay. Uh, yeah. But no, dude, you're absolutely right. The whole stepping into crypto is uh, a lot of people. I don't think necessarily know what they're signing up for. And you still don't really know what you're signing up for until you really start to feel it. You touched on um, the emotional involvement. And I'm curious, especially with the fact that you even though I, I shy away from the term um, for myself, we are influencers. Everybody in this space is an influencer. Whether we have one follower, of course, the more followers we have, the more weight people might view on the things that we say, the more they might kind of hold us to our word. <laughs> so that does add pressure um, for somebody writing on Twitter or making YouTube videos. And that's completely kind of tangential from the main focus, which is being a good steward of our money and making wise investment moves. And especially as yourself, um, as a self-proclaimed trader, um, which I find it funny, you say that you're a trader and a holder. So we'll get a little bit more into your portfolio makeup. But Sabi, what can you, you know, teach us or tell us about how you kind of keep your emotions in check. I know through your YouTube channel that you rely on charts, you know, you allow the charts to kind of, you know, tell us the story and you just kind of try to keep this objective touch on it. But what can you tell us? How do you keep your emotions in check in the midst of all of this crazy volatility, FUD, all of it, you know? Yeah, uh, I think that is the hardest to learn. And mm -hmm. I usually say that I'm halfway there. So I, I, I wouldn't dare to say that I'm there. You know, I'm like, I know this shit. <laughs> I'm halfway there because I think, I think there are two major steps about, about controlling your emotions. I think one of the big part is buying in when it's red, when it's going down, you know, buy the dip. That is the first one. That is, it's, it's like halfway. It's very important to learn and it, takes you a lot of time to get there. And the other one is to sell it because mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I believe that selling it is much harder than buying it. And the reason I'm saying that I'm halfway there that is because I buy in, in the red, no problem, no emotions. It can even drop further. No problem. I have a good risk management. I know what I, I know how much I invest and I always invest the money, which not that I can lose that because that is also a bit of a lie, you know, um, of course, I say invest the money, which if you lose it, it doesn't affect your lifestyle. Okay. That is, that is what I think. Okay. It does. It doesn't matter that if I lose the money, which I have in crypto right now, I won't cry to myself to sleep for a couple of weeks because, <laughs> and I think many of us are in the same situation, maybe probably, probably everybody in crypto. Now, um, controlling the emotions, it takes experience i think it takes lots of how should i say i i don't know how to how to ex, how to say it you know it just takes this this endurance you have to you have to buy in and you have to wait you have to control you sit on your hands and you just say mm. that i am not going to sell it in red because i know that it's going to go up 
uh, as we say, whatever goes up, it also comes down. It 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 is true the otherwise the um, the other way around as well. Therefore, you need to learn this, and you need to just somehow push down that feeling that I want to take out when it's on, when I lost eighty percent. It's yeah. not great if somebody lost eighty percent. That's obviously painful. I think everybody in crypto was in that situation, even in ninety nine percent. I even now I even now have some meme coins which I bought for a couple hundred dollars and they're worth like two or maybe one. I don't know. I don't yeah. even I don't even check. It's just you know that's gamble. That's gam- gambling. So yeah, this is I think this is what I could I could tell anybody that if you if you invested some money and you just have to sell it because you know that it's going to affect your life, your your day to day life, you invested too much. If you want to take it out because because you don't want to lose it, but it wouldn't affect your life, then you need to learn how to sit on your hands and just just endure it, you know, soldier oh, through. Yeah. Absolutely. Sitting on the hands and, is something that I could definitely learn. Um, but um, you also mentioned um, buying in the red. And I just want to question you on that because I noticed in some of your YouTube videos that as a trader, you know, you're making these YouTube videos and you do indicate whenever you're looking at different charts, um, basically you, it seems as though you're waiting for a breakout indication as a trader, which to me is, um, converse to what you're saying as buying in the red. So real quick, what could you say about that? I mean, that's, it sounds like Uh, a different mentality we're speaking about, but clarify. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe I should have clarified that. So I'm, I was talking about about holding okay when yeah. when i invest and i invest for for two years three years okay for example with the e-gold chart and that is one mindset which i just said the trader's mindset that is a different that is very very different mm-hmm. that is when you have a strategy okay and whatever whatever you use i don't know you use the rsi the the simple moving average and engulfing candle for example right and you know that when these three are in, I mean, when the, when these three are aligned, then you buy in, right? Or you go after candle formations. I do very often. So that is a very different type. But but when I when I trade, the longest time I hold the trade is maybe two days. That is like extremely long. Usually it's in and out, and and obviously the the leverage is high because I do it with small amount of money because I don't risk a lot of money, but when it goes, it goes well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I figured that was a distinction between holding and trading, um, but it's nonetheless a good distinction to make since, yeah, I can definitely agree with the idea. You you buy when nobody's nobody's talking about it, nobody cares. And it's something that I heard from one of these uh, influencers, um, which I actually still watch to this day. I think his name is Bob Lucas. You may have seen me post on uh, my Twitter about him. He's this wise trader, older British sounding dude who got his start in traditional Forex and all that good stuff. But now he views crypto as the next best opportunity. So he says, basically, once you're, he lives in New York and he says, once, once his taxi driver starts talking to him about bitcoin or cryptocurrency basically top is in you know <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i had that i had that how should i say that situation it was it was about forex okay it was it was about forex and uh i like like last year uh the hungarian currency went through some rough patch let's say and i went to a, to a game and everybody who had nothing to do with investing trading anything you know they all wanted to sell uh, and to buy euros. And I knew that, okay, this is going to be a turning point. And it was, you know, yeah. because it was just, yeah. And hundred, hundred percent. Uh, I told my friends because we last year we celebrated, you know, new year's Eve, we went, um, to, to a cabin and stuff like that, which we do every year. And they were asking me about, about Bitcoin, about Ethereum, stuff like that, you know, about crypto. And I said, if you want to buy, start now. Okay. And, and then start with $100. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't just drop in thousands. Okay. Or whatever. Even, even though if you, even though if you could afford, you know, it's better to start with 
very small amount until you work yourself up um, until you get acclimatized to this industry. Mm -hmm. So they didn't, they didn't buy. And I was asked again, just recently. And I told them that, you know, next time you ask me and you want to buy and you are prepared to buy, that's when I'm going to sell because mm -hmm. that will be a top signal for me. I mean, it's obvious. That's so 100%. Yeah. Some of those, I call them real life indicators tend to be some of the most reliable, but the most influential at the same time, right? Because even though you kind of acknowledge that, you know, you might view your friend as a top signal, I think that the reality for a lot of people is that they might find something or they might get in along with the hype. And there's very much this herd mentality. And that can be positive, of course, if everybody continues to win. Um, but of course, it has a great deal of risk and downside associated with it, which really yeah. speaks to that investment strategy. And the low and slow grind tends to be the long term winner. And again, that points back to what you said about patience, endurance, sitting on your hands. So, man, how have you felt over the past two years of bear market? Have you had any trading wins that you want to discuss or just... How has the bear market been? And uh, we'll, we'll move um, from there. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but um, from a trader or holder perspective, what's been your mentality over the past two years? Um, I think in the past few years, I mean, let's face it, I started the channel at the top of the altcoin season. So uh, it was lots of things going on, you know, from, from many perspectives. Um, I, I had a couple of... Um, maybe months when I was really thinking that the, the bottom is in. And I think that that just, that, that just uh, tells us that you, you, you can never know when the, mm. when the bottom is in. Uh, regarding trading, uh, it, was, it was a mix. Uh, I am, how should I say, since I'm, I'm trading with a small amount, you know, I, I don't make my, my bread and butter with, with trading. I am using it, you know, to, Pay my graphic designer for YouTube and stuff like that. So for for those small small things, it's 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 very good. However, uh, we can, it is it is very clear that there are some seasons when it's much better to trade than than uh, than other 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 months. For example, the last one month, you know, this choppy season, I had I had lots of losing trades. I had couple of bigger winners, uh, which just, just forced them out, you know, so it's, uh, maybe it's like a, it's a, it's a bit, it bit in minus at this moment. However, it was very choppy before that I had this bigger, much bigger profits, which I've worked on with the last month. So it's, um, I, and that's why I always say, you know, um, it is very hard to trade if you don't have time and obviously I don't have as much time as I need, as I would need to trade professionally, because simple as that, I'm, I'm, I'm also part of the Morningstar Ventures team. I'm doing the YouTube stuff, trading, and everybody should, should understand this. Trading is a full-time job. If you want to, to have like an income, a monthly income, money which you make for your living, that's a full-time job, okay? You can, you can learn it only investing like two, three hours per day. That is good. But if you want to be a trader, that's an eight hour job, 100%. It's whatever we see on Instagram and, and in YouTube, you know, that I just, somebody just, just starts to trade and, and just, you know, goes to the Starbucks with the Ferrari and then, you know, the money is just coming in. No, that's not true. So, so you think uh, they're yeah. full of BS? Those influencers are posting and kind of flaunting their wealth? Or do you, or perhaps yes, and, they already had the wealth established and then they're almost creating this guys like they've won it via trading. You know, the thing is that almost all of them, I would say 98% of them are selling courses, you know? Mm -hmm. And if somebody, why would somebody just put themselves in a situation when they need to put extra work for, for, a, I don't know how much money, but if they are a good trader, you know, they can make way more, way more, because there are funded accounts which offer you $1 million to $3 million. If you have a $3 million funded account and you make only 5% per month, which is not, not, not hard to achieve, you know, with a good strategy, 
why would you mean why would you need to sell those accounts mm. also yeah and and on top of that for example my wife she's she's now becoming to be uh, she's becoming a professional trader because for the last one year okay and everybody just one year she's learning trading with with proper courses and everything and many people from her group are saying that they they uh just bought like one thousand uh, dollar i don't know lecture or course you know trading and it was like almost a scam they didn't say they just said that this is resistance and support and buy here sell there it's like that's nothing so yeah mm. um uh regarding you got Coming back to your original question, um, I think it was tricky in the last two years. However, I didn't really have any, at any moment, I didn't think that uh, we are not going to have a new bull run. So it just never, I didn't, I, I never had my, uh, I never, I was, sorry, I was never thinking that I'm going to sell everything and just exit the market. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I think I, I managed my emotions pretty well, and I think that is the most important, and that is what everybody should should learn. And coming back to the to the previous topic, you know about the herd mentality. Um, I I very often say that I have conspiracy theories, you know, and for me one of the big indicators is when Facebook and uh, traditional finance media is full of crypto. That is a huge buying. Um, that, is a, that is a huge sell signal for me, yeah. and it's it's coming from the other markets, you know, because at stock market they are doing the same things, you know. They want liquidity, and that is when the big ones are selling. That's the, when the smart money will just exit the market. They pay lots of lots of journalists, lots of platforms, you know, to create. Uh, to create these news for this that extra 20 30 percent which they can achieve and then just they just exit and dump everything on people so mm. yeah that's why the uh, that's why i think that media whatever the media says do the opposite i hear you and i agree with you up until this point but to speculate into the future um so for one uh two questions kind of come to mind um it sounds so you you talk about on your Twitter and your YouTube, um, you're basically anti permable, you know, don't be a permable, which maybe you say that just to remind of the mentality, keep it in check. Um, but the fact that you said that you never doubted that the, the bull market would come back, it seems like you have a teeny tiny sliver of permable deep inside of you. Am I right? Yes, teeny, yes. And I tell you bit. why I tell you why. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes. 100%. I think everybody must have a certain amount of optimism, you know, otherwise you just cannot survive this market. Mm. And yes, I am, I am um, against being a permable. Uh, and uh, people will hate, hate me for this, but about every project, which is not Bitcoin. And, and I tell you why, because in my eyes, the only decentralized crypto is Bitcoin. Uh, I know that we are big ego fans. I am as well, obviously. Otherwise, my channel wouldn't exist, to be honest, because it's like ninety percent I'm, I'm I'm making content about about ego. Mm -hmm. However, I always think about the human factor, you know, which is there. Therefore, it's very hard to say that one certain project, you know, is as as secure as decentralized as Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Being the permeable and why I still have this in me, right? So Bitcoin also in the, at the same time gives me confidence that all these projects will go forward, you know? It's just too much to win. It's too much reward comparing to the risk or comparing to uh, just, just fuck it and leave and, and we are gonna do something else, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that is why I, I didn't adopt uh, that we will return and it's just gonna, gonna take off at, at, at some point. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, I am a tiny bit of a permable. However, I think some uh, people, maybe you too, maybe you too, uh, are taking too seriously, you know, uh, about about the, the locking, locking, uh, for example, their tokens. I think you, me you meant that tweet, which I said that people will lock. Uh, is it that my pinned tweet with the crystal ball? Or it was a, uh, about the hat uh, Hatom? Maybe about um, Mahatom. I, I come to. Th I mean, I've seen it a few times, and I, I heard yeah. you say it. In a, so I've heard it 
here and yeah. there. Nothing specific, I, I would say. It's actually because of the comments. You know, sometimes I just go back and read some of the comments, okay? Uh, you know, from 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 different period of times, you know, you know, how the market was, what comments came in, you know, and it's very easy to see people's emotion, how people reacted to to uh, price action. And I can see that many people, uh, they lock their tokens, for example, you know, and I'm not saying that they would have sold. OK, because that is obviously what I just said, you know, at the beginning, that that is like the 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 hardest part to sell your tokens when you, you have a great unrealized profit and <laughs> key, uh, keyword unrealized here. Right, right. And Especially uh, if yeah, those that's, tokens are locked. <laughs> yeah, if they are locked, maybe. And look, many, many people are locking them because they don't want to sell it. And that is something which I 100 percent understand. And I agree with that. If you are positive that you want to keep the token, you know, for 10 years, five years, lock it and leave it. That's fine. But then it's not great if some people are crying about it on Twitter and YouTube, you know, and they are blaming the project and the, and the founders. Yeah. So it's like one of them, you know, just, just, just choose, you know, sell it, sure. take profits or lock it and don't cry about it. That is my stance on, on, uh, on this part of the looking, not looking permeable. Yeah. So, yeah. So the second question that kind of arose out of um, your previous answer um, was about those sell signals about, um, and I think it's similar as well to kind of what we've been talking about with this herd mentality. So, and where I uh, was um, saying was let's speculate moving into the future here, because as you know, what percentage is beside the fact we got a little bit of permeable in each of us. Yeah. And uh, I'll speak, I'll speak for myself and say that, you know, I'm still waiting for this whole paradigm shift, global adoption phase. So at some point, and, and this is for you to either challenge, agree, or just respond to. But my belief is that at some point, that almost that that sell signal that you were referring to oh meta facebook whoever is talking about this thing that's a sell signal i think that there's you know going to be a period of time where you know this whole hype mentality everyone is talking about it is going to su sustain some serious growth a lot of the underlying tech that has been developing over the decade will be realized but not just the Bitcoin factor, but, you know, projects like Multiverse X, and I'll even throw Solan in there just because they're popular and, you know, get some credibility there. Nonetheless, what are your expectations and how do you expect for these sell signals that have been semi-reliable over, you know, in, in the past? Um, what are your mm -hmm. anticipations for what those sell signals um, might look like in the future? Um, and what are your expectations as we move closer to what some could call the beginning of a bull market, which we'll get into a little bit more, but uh, I'll leave you to answer those uh, first questions about these sell signals. Okay. Um, I think I think I will answer combined to this, or may, maybe in, in one answer to these two questions, of because course. in my in my mind they are related. So let's start with the mass adoption, right? So I don't think that we will have a mass adoption by having like a big surge of price, okay, um, in value of assets, and then it stays there. It just for me that's I don't think it will happen. And for the simple fact that ret even though retail drives the price, you know, but when everything starts, you know, and when everything, let's say, ends mm -hmm. as cycle, you know, uh, it's it's the big money, it's the smart money, which is not, not smart money, but yeah, it's it's the big bags, you know, they are buying and selling. That is what is moving, and that is also the Eagles chart today. Now. Um, for me, the mass adoption is more like over, over a period of time, and that will probably be decades, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it might happen that, I don't know, with the CBDCs or with the, with, with, for example, I just, I just watched a video when the guy said that some, there was a whistleblower at an insurance company, and they say that they, they will put, you know, tracking in your car, you know, you cannot drive a car which uh, doesn't have a tracking and uh, based on how you drive, it will just increase or decrease your premium, probably in only only increase, but whatever. 
for me, these things, and, and obviously we can talk about dystopian futures, uh, which may or may not happen. However, we are going into this controlling, you know, over controlling, over controlled war world. Therefore, I think that even though in the next, let's say 20 years, uh, we will have an adoption, we will have an uptrend, okay, uh, and more and more people uh, will start to use crypto and Bitcoin. I don't think that we will have, um, you know, the cycles will not be cancelled. And those cycles are visible on any market, okay, uh, on, on the stocks as well, on the S&P 500, it's very visible, on the gold price, for example. Therefore, I do think that crypto, and Bitcoin, uh, it will continue the cycles. And for me, top signal is, uh, yes, one is the media about how people who are non degens are reacting to the news. Uh, but also at this moment in this cycle, for example, the timing is very important for me because based on the previous, uh, previous, previous cycles, uh, for the simple reason that the market cap, you know, the people in crypto are not as many as in S&P 500, you know, mm -hmm. the capitalization is not the same. Then crypto and Bitcoin will have, I don't know, half, for example, of whatever, I don't know, the tech, for example, the, the tech market, then we can, we can start, uh, we can start to talk about, about this mass adoption, about having this lower return, but stable, right? Volatility will be way lower. And uh, obviously, uh, we will have also smaller rewards. So yeah. yeah, for me, this is. I don't think that in the in the near very near future, we will have a huge sur a surge in in value because of something. Because we are as people, okay, as human beings, we are way too divided in order to react at the same time, at the same way to something. Well, how I know it's you... not very positive. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, how would you respond to the, I mean, I know that we're in year 2023, almost 2024. So to refer to blow off tops like 2017, and arguably even just the last one that pushed towards 70,000 or 69k. Haha. Um, but what, what would you say to somebody who, who kind of challenges what you just said about, well, Sabi, I mean, clearly, the herd mentality is prevalent in these volatile markets, everybody wants to get rich, overnight and combining that historical precedent with the fact of the matter that this technology both fundamentally from a technical perspective of improvements almost like on the computer science side of things you know true rod rooted um improvements being made to these protocols um i mean would I, for me being the more permeable than you I'll, I'll say um why wouldn't the herd mentality be even more powerful moving forward now that the technology has a little bit more you know tangibility to it um that's a good question and i i still think it's because we just don't react the same way yeah uh the same time to something uh, if there is 10 people who say, okay, this is good and I want to buy it, there will be 10 others who say, no, this is stupid. We've seen yeah. it many times, starting with the, with the mobile phones. Okay. Let's not, mm -hmm. let's not even go into the smartphones, just the mobile phones. Okay. And that's what, that was the same with the internet and everybody, I mean, many people are comparing, um, this crypto industry to the dot-com bubble there are some similarities however for me it's not very similar uh even though we have you know lots of coming and going projects uh i think the best way is to watch you know zoomed out the the whole market capitalization it's obviously a huge uptrend and it's mm -hmm. great to see it uh however i don't i just don't think that we will just stand united you know because everybody will recognize the technology, the risks, which, uh, which crypto solves, you know, and also the opportunities. And I just give you an, one example, mm -hmm. you know, that the WEF has a YouTube, YouTube channel, 
where they stream all of the meetings and stuff like that, you can go and check how many views are on certain videos. You know, it's like some, some of them have like 400 and it's the VEF, the World Economic Forum. Yeah, so that's yeah. how people don't care about what is going, going to happen because people are just very occupied with their own life, which is understandable, especially after the inflation and everything. I think it's very hard to economically for, for millennials, for us, for example, you know, uh, to get a house, you know, to, to, to have like a decent living. And, and, and that is, that is what we should learn, you know, to just, just look out, look, look a bit higher up from, from the day to day, you know, and, and, and think about what could happen and what things could solve. However, I don't see that everybody at the same time, we react the same way, as I said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get too much into that. I feel like that was more of a, a debate type topic, which I mean, you know, maybe my viewers know that I'm, I'm very bullish. Um, and as we talked about, you know, whenever you get a little bit ahead of yourself, that's where you can lose control of your emotions, start making trades that uh, end up putting you in a worse spot when the reality is that, you know, the long term perspective, sure, have maybe a, a side portfolio that you um, feed those um, endorphins and fun trading um, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. but, uh, have, have a side portfolio to have some fun with trading. But, um, for me, I'm very much on the long-term perspective and, uh, that kind of leads me to my, my next question. You started with Bitcoin and a little bit of Ethereum. It sounds like, um, how has your journey and your understanding knowledge of the usability of these products, how do you see it changing and how would you see, or rather, what do you think of its current state right now? Do you believe that the kind of the, the fundamental use case of these different protocols that have now developed up to this point? How, I mean, do you think that it's to that point of a tipping tipping point, or do you still think that we might go through some more um, ebbs and flows of people actually realizing and actually truly using this technology to replace those kind of web two counterparts? Um, so I think uh, the this uh, I think the answer. Lie, uh, lies somewhere in the real world asset, you know, the, the real world asset coins. Mm -hmm. Because I think even, even Peter Schiff, who is like very anti anything, but he also said that, that gold should be tokenized, you know, and then so it can be transacted much easier. Obviously, he can, he can also see the, the opportunity there, you know, with the paper gold. Um, I think uh, we just developed a lot. I think many people just recognized how much easier something can be with crypto, with blockchain. I don't think that it solves everything. So blockchain, you know, and crypto, they are not good for everything. It's not like everything needs to be replaced, but there are certain things which should be. I mean, as I said, I've worked in corporations, right? We had huge productions and everything. You cannot understand how how complicated some of the databases are and how much blockchain could help those uh, therefore uh -huh. i think that the world is just going forward and it is adopting i do think that we are in a on a very good path um, obviously the wide west uh you know they want to tame it a bit and we can we can talk about that as well that what the taming means because it means lots of things to many people yeah, uh, yeah. however i do think that uh, anybody who works in 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 the private sector and even even the governments they can see the opportunities they can see in which areas blockchain can help and they are adopting it i mean look uh, i was on a conference in hungary two years ago Yes, two years ago, and they just said that, okay, we are developing CBDC for six years now. And if you check the source code, you will see some, some uh, similarities to Ethereum and some other coins. So you don't really need much more, you know, explanation than that. Obviously, it is, it is something which everybody sees the opportunity in it, you know, they want to adopt it. However, however, many shareholders want to adopt it. 
on their terms. And that is when everything gets tricky, you know, adopting oh, yeah. things on whose terms. Right. And if you believe, as many do, that money is power, then it's easy to understand how much potential, how much disruption the world of cryptocurrency and now, you know, expanding to this idea of Web3, right? Not just cryptocurrency, not just tokenized assets, rather industry disruptors for art, for finance, for asset management, yep. which is you've already kind of touched on. So absolutely, man. I mean, there's a lot of big players. And um, I know um, that I'm very far away from that top 1% of wealth uh, possessors in the world. So what do, what do you think they're thinking of whenever they see the power of decentralization? And in my opinion, the power that it gives to the people, since the fiat, fiat currency oftentimes um, goes hand in hand with the you know wealth of a nation, the power of a nation. I mean, just what are your thoughts on the higher level, big wealth and money watchers like BlackRock with their ETF that they filed for? It seems there's definitely a shift and an acknowledgement of value here that for many years, the news headlines and so forth have really had a complete opposite view on. Um, so um, what are your thoughts on on that in terms of power, in terms of democracy? Um, yeah, that's a very good one. So first of all, many people say, I, I saw it on Twitter that, yeah, they just want to make a quick, quick buck, you know, and just just get over with it. First of all, if they wouldn't be worried about something or they wouldn't see opportunity in something, they wouldn't care about it. Okay. It's just, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, uh, makes us money or if it doesn't, uh, gives us problems, then we don't care about it because it's a waste of time and effort. Right. Therefore, I think it's both. And I think the government, uh, honestly, they, they know that it's a problem. It could be a problem for them, you know, and I'm talking about transparency, traceability, you know, uh, accountability, yeah, right? Yeah. Because blockchain would solve like all of that. I mean, yeah. in, in, in like from overnight, overnight, we would know, you know, which money goes where. And oh, we yeah. have great analysts, uh, on-chain analysts, you know, right? Even yeah, even, even in also in the X alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F F Faudres, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Fudru. Fudru? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, my French is not <laughs> not good. <laughs> yeah, and um, so that's that's why they want to control it, and that's why they want to somehow avoid it, right? The, I I do think that the government still thinks that okay, we have to make sure that this this stays the kids money you know like like kids playing monopoly you know in the corner however on the other side blackrock gp morgan goldman sachs you know they see the opportunity there they see hey you guys are making 5x 10x 50x you also might want to make those gains because it's much better than the two percent and the eight percent per year on s p 500 if you are lucky right yeah. and there is no, there isn't like a big i don't know interest rate uh search mm -hmm, therefore mm -hmm. it's a clash of titans on that on that matter i think and that is why we will have the etf and i think people who think that the government is the most powerful they couldn't be more wrong because the government gets the money from the private sector mm -hmm. and this comes back to a very simple fact you have power if you supply something. If somebody needs something from you and the private sector is the one which generates the money and we can go back and say that BlackRock uh, gave the money in 2008 uh, to bail out JP Morgan and before that JP Morgan helped out the government to bail out somebody else. Mm -hmm. So you see... Yeah. My mom, would say, my mom would always say you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Just the idea of taking one money, passing it along to somebody else who messed up. I think it's a, a little bit different concept, but I digress. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, to, to just to continue this thought, um, I think they are figuring out right now. I mean, let's talk about the U.S. because I think the U.S. is like the it's one is the biggest market. Uh, it's I don't think there will I I don't think that crypto would be the same without the U.S. It's very important, and there is also like the biggest 
uh, confrontation conflict with crypto and non-crypto it's in the us okay yeah. um therefore i think what i'm what they are trying to do right now is to is to control and to make sure that even even if people have exposure you know that the money stays inside and yeah yeah you know we could see that for with binance you know right in, in i mean two weeks that's that's my big question and I, I, I can't think of the right word. It's not an accusation, but the the idea of maintaining control through the guise of protecting investors' responses. Yeah, Co or, yeah, protecting, protecting. Right. Yeah, I can, but but I can gamble, right? I mean, I can I can just take all my money from the bank account and I could can put it on any horse, any race car, any yeah. whatever, right? And yeah. I can also, I also see you know the advertisement of gambling but that, that's something you know that many i mean it's the same in the uk i mean if dude, you are there. it's it's all it's all ridiculous i mean you're exactly right but even to the extent of um i don't know if there's anything like this um in europe or globally but in america the idea of a payday loan you take you can get loans on money you don't even have yet pay obscene interest rates and it's yeah. just it's very much this idea of there's good debt and there's bad debt and it's not as if people always have a decision sometimes you get in a jam and you you need money and oh all of a sudden pops up millions of of profit making um um people to provide this service when in reality they're just making millions off of people who are in tight situations paying obscene interest rates so yeah. i mean whether it's g straight up gambling or or whether it's other industries that are just purely I don't I'll just say toxic not not so much evil because uh, you know we'll get too philosophical there but go ahead please I I just I totally no, you're, agree with you're what you're putting out there 100% right uh, and we don't even need to go there you know I mean look you can buy TV on on 12 months payment you know and and somebody said that good debt is when you want a car and you you get uh, a loan from the bank and you buy a van which you use to make money that is good debt bad yeah. debt is when you want a car you take the same amount and you buy a car which you cannot afford and then you crash it and you still need to pay back that loan yeah. so um i think that is a very simple explanation it's very true and that is actually actually that is what i i live by i mean i i don't really have debt right now but if I would have debt, you know, uh, that would probably be for something like that. Uh, I am. I think what what is very important to everybody to understand, and I do think that those who are in crypto, they 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 start to understand because even though we are degens here, and even though we, you know, with the charts and everything, we also I'm I also try to to just, you know, uh, just put a bit of financial education there as well, you know, like like. I wouldn't do that, something like that, okay? I wouldn't do, take that debt or I, I wouldn't, uh, I don't know, uh, as you said, take a, how, how did you say it's a payday loan or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, payday loan. Yeah, so no, and it's important to remember that. And I think that even though, yeah, everybody wants something, everybody wants wants more of, of, of everything, right? We want better cars, bigger house, bigger homes, uh, I don't know, nicer clothes, whatever, you know, but uh, it's not it's not that easy to make money as as 90% uh, of the people on the internet suggests. So yeah. we need to take that into consideration, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, of course, a lot more that I could probably respond to there, um, but I want to move it along. And eventually, of course, I would like to hone in a little bit more on Multiverse X. But before we do get there, I'm just curious to kind of open it up to the broad crypto market. We talked about the markets, about the idea of the bear market, emotional intelligence, trading, risk management, all that good stuff. So just at from the um, crypto market at large, and more so really just referring to emerging markets, Web3, new technologies, new companies. Um, and this also relates to the content that you put on your YouTube channel, which also reminds me that you started a new YouTube channel I meant to shout out at the beginning. 
coin explorers so yes. check that out audience go check that out um subscribe to sabi um but yeah man so when it comes to we'll just paint a big picture web three not crypto not any one particular um but what projects companies platforms what's really standing out to you right now what what do you think is exciting um for you and what perhaps do you think implications are with the idea of getting more people into the Web3 space familiar with navigating and uh, just <clears throat> understanding the technology? Um, anything rising to the top that's getting you excited? Yeah, actually, I have two things. Um, one is gaming. Okay, Web Web three is very very vague for me. You know, lots of things can be can be Web three. I mean, if anybody makes a metaverse, you know. It's, it's already Web3. But for me, I think gaming shifted a lot. And I talked to many uh, gaming you know, founders, gaming project founders. And, from, and obviously, it's a cliche already. And everyone says that, that you, know, from, from you can earn by playing. It's to enjoy the game. And you earn if you want. However, what I think... Uh, will bump this up, you know, this market and why I think it's it has a huge future or huge uh, gain ahead is because the games themselves, they, it, it's the, the development is crazy. I mean, mm. look at The Witcher 3 for how many years it was developed. It's a great game. Uh, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk uh, was developed for seven, eight years. And when it came out, it was a huge crash. However, right now, uh, we can see that from Axie, we got to games like, uh, I'm trying not to mention games, uh, but the one which ca comes to my mind is, is the one I had a interview with uh, on the MSC podcast, and that is Godzilla games. And I was thinking, because they, they post some trailers, you know, videos, you know, and the guy said, and I was thinking, you know, usually when games, they post like a trailer, you know, that's not actually the, the gameplay, you know, it's like, it's a marketing. And uh, the guy said that, look, whatever we have on our YouTube channel, it's actually gameplay. It's from testing. It's mm -hmm. not a trailer. And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, you know, and they are just, they are catching up too fast. I, I'm playing some games, okay? I played NHL, FIFA, I played uh, uh, Formula One, and, and the shooter is Call of Duty, okay? Mm -hmm. War Warzone, lately. I mean, I haven't played it for two months, but let's say lately. Uh, and I can see how fast they are catching up to them. And that's why I think that um, that the gaming industry has a, has a huge future. And also at the same, same time, you know, I went, was like four or five months ago, a professional trader was banned from, I don't know which player, and he just lost all his items, mm. right? Which he just bought and built up and went to competition with and stuff like that. Mm. I mean, can you imagine that's like, you are working for a company and you lose all your skills and you have to yeah. start over. And uh, in, in, in Web3, that's, it's not going to be like that because everything is in, in, your, in your wallet. Now, that yeah. is one of the industry I'm focusing. I actually, I am preparing some videos about that. Cool. The other one, which is not really an industry, but I think it will have some nice gains, is the Launchpad projects. Because we are entering the bull run. We can see that people are launching projects and everybody will want to participate in public sales as we want to participate in public sales on the multiverse X, right? And that's why we lock tokens. That's why we stake them. Therefore, I do think that at one time, there will be a huge surge in the Launchpad projects value because people will buy their tokens to lock it, you know, so they have uh, exposure to, uh, to new projects. Mm. That's so the, just to clarify, are you talking about basically uh, initial either DEX offerings, sex offerings, or just initial coin offerings altogether? I don't want to use that ICO word that feels remnant reminiscent of like 2017 <laughs> bubble. Uh, I'm talking about projects like CD5, for example, you know, uh, yeah. Firestarter, Polka Starter, these, these projects. I, I'm, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know which one will go how much because my crystal ball is still in shipment uh, <laughs> from China. But uh, but I do think that these projects 100% will pump, and 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 lots of projects will come to the market. And 
as soon as we see the first project which did the hundred X, you know, the Twitter, Coin Gecko, everything will be all over it. And that's when, you know, people will jump on this. Yeah, that almost uh, finally got around to answering that question I brought up earlier about some of those sell signals, um, which is still, you know, a very much crystal ball esque question of, oh, we'll speculate over how the future will be, which is always impossible, as we know. Um, but yeah, man, the gaming industry is is one that I am not very deep in. I am more on the music side of things if I was to place myself anywhere. Um, nonetheless, just the the fact I already described and ta talked about how disruptive cryptocurrency will be just for finance markets. But um, I, I don't know. It, Hope this will be a, a good conversation for me because I do tend to forget about gaming. And that's such a good point you bring up about how um, there are people who make a living out of this. And if the platform is centralized, if they say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or get canceled, it's like, all right, well, whoever that centralized agency is, they get to decide. And yeah. that's uh, not, I would not say that that is fair. Um, so that's definitely one of those um, aspects of, of just decentralization and blockchain, um, which very much rise to the top, just the idea of self custody, whether it's assets or whether it's just, you know, ownership in a more almost metaphysical way, you own your account, um, and therefore everything that kind of interacts with it maintains yeah. uh, under your own umbrella. Yeah, I just want to add here that I'm not saying that nobody should be banned or something because people do stupid shit and that happens. However, they should do something like, hey, we don't accept this on this platform. Take your assets and take it wherever you want. That is the fair thing to say, yeah. okay? Because obviously, as I said before, with the decentralization of what is decentralized and what is not, also the gaming projects are, are centralized, right? Because if... And and for me, the how we test, you know, it's very simple. Can one man shut it down? If one man can shut it down or group of men, you know, like a small group of men, like mm -hmm. CEOs, founders, then obviously it's centralized that in my head. Yeah. The game can be shut down. However, you should have your own assets, which you can uh, take it somewhere else. And uh, that actually brings to a third one, which is the gaming guilds. I'm very curious about those. What could you tell us about those? What are you learning? I know that there is lots of uh, development there as well, lots of cooperations, and we will have, I think we will have countless of gaming guilds because we have lots of types of games. Obviously, you cannot take your guns from Call of Duty to Formula One because it's just not compatible, you know? Right, right. You, you can't force a win with a gun. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. however, I do think that, uh, there will be different type of gaming guilds, you know, which will have, you know, with partnerships, you know, around games and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I think to see it, I don't know about tokens or whatever. However, it's a good industry to, to, to watch because that is a very new one. Okay. That is like, that is as new as, as web three gaming was before Axie, I think. Because the cross-chain, uh, you know, the cross-chain communication, the cross-chain uh, wallets, everything is in development right now. We, it's it's like a new thing for this for this uh, new market. Therefore, they are at the very very beginning. Totally, totally, cool. So even though I would say, from my perspective, it seems like NFTs are not a topic that you discuss very often. Um, agree or disagree? And I'm going to force the question upon you what your thoughts are on it. I'm not going to explicitly ask if you're invested or if you own any NFTs. Um, but you talked about gaming. We're obviously talking about web through crypto block blockchain. It's all under the same umbrella here. Um, so what's your perspective on NFTs and whether or not that's going to be something you dive further into as the fingers crossed bull market emerges but it's something which i should dive in um the reason i so obviously everything is will be an nft these assets they will be nfts so 100 percent uh they are a big part of this uh this new industry mm -hmm. uh the reason i don't talk much about nfts is because first of all and let me just add here 
I think NFTs were great and are great for artists, for those who were not recognized before, for those who just emerged, you know, they just, I mean, their art could could be seen by by many new people and many people could make many artists could make a good living of it and i think that's that's amazing uh first of all because i would think that in the art world as well you need a bit of political networking and connections you know to get into the certain galleries for example or or or, or whatever wherever you know so mm-hmm. it's uh, it's not a not a small one however if for example if, if an artist you know somebody who paints you know let's talk about digital art or even physical art which is um you know shipped with nfts or it an nft is the authentication of that that art i think it they were great however i am not very great with art you know i don't have that sniff uh which tells me whether this is like a good graphic or not it's something which people will like or not i have a very strange taste Therefore, and I also, I'm also kind of a skeptical person, not about the NFTs, however, about, about projects, about people, you know, it, and it's only yeah. because I, I just want to protect myself and those who follow me. Obviously, that is sometimes a miss of opportunity. Yeah, the conclusion about, about uh, my, the limited content uh, on my channel about NFTs is because of my limitation. It's because I need to learn more about it. Um, you know, as everybody, some people have strengths and, you know, in parts where you, you just need extra effort to, to learn it. However, yeah. since I am um, now in contact, you know, I am, I'm interviewing many, many type of projects, people's founders, then obviously I'm also learning with it. And uh, I, will, I, I, I do plan to make more content about NFTs. Understood, man. Well, I look forward to that for sure. But even just non-personally, I'm just looking forward to NFTs finding a new light in the conversation. Whereas in the past, it was very JPEG focused. As you mentioned already, you don't have that sniff of what is good art. And to me, good art is physical. I do believe in graphic art. Obviously, art is art. But when it comes to especially the world of AI that's opening up and giving us the possibilities of putting in a prompt and boom, art is created, you know, this quote unquote art, I think that the level of, you know, criticism, which is a positive thing, the level of criticism towards graphic art is uh, probably going to to become a little bit more competitive. Um, So um, that'll be a fun industry to, to, to watch unfold. Yes. But I also think that it also will go down as with anything new which appears on the market, meaning that the consumers will decide uh, if people can distinguish, you know, um, a certain art because it was it was created by a certain artist and they will buy that and they will just recognize that huh, this is AI. Mm-hmm. Then obviously uh, AI will, 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 will not be able to uh, mimic it, you know, to to copy yeah. it. So it is a very interesting question, which, which you just raised. Uh, and I am also, um, I also share your opinion about art is physical because I just, I want to put it on the wall, you know, it's, uh, I yeah. want to see it yeah. every time. I, I don't just want to see it when I, when I open it. So yeah, I, I was, I am still searching for an art piece, you know, uh, which when I buy the NFT, it comes with, with, with the physical art. Yeah, something absolutely. which I like, but it's very hard for me because I don't have the sniff. So, <laughs> right, right, right. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking for that. If if anybody knows something, uh, some project, just just send it. Put it in the comments because I'm gonna yeah. read them. Drop a comment for sure, for sure. Cool, man. Well, I want to discuss a little bit more closely about Multiverse X, um, but for but for doing so, just so uh, viewers can understand what biases may be involved here, um, give us a rundown. What what's your portfolio looking like? If you care to include any traditional investments or tangible things such as real estate, or you know maybe maybe Sabi has a has a car. Uh, you you invest in cars. You mentioned motorcycles. So be as detailed as you want. Um, but uh, what's what's your portfolio allocation looking like in terms of percentages these days? Okay, so 
Well, I don't have any collectible cars or, or motorcycles. I wish I had. I I will have. I will have about uh, maybe in 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> I am mani- I am manifesting it very hard. <laughs> now, um, I am still also in the stock market. So I, uh, I have like 30% uh, traditional and 70% in crypto. Mm-hmm. But that 30% is, is just there. It's, you know, I, I, I manage it like every four or five months. So yeah. I can't really say that I'm very active there. Mm-hmm. I, am, I have uh, much higher hopes from crypto. Mm-hmm. Uh, in percentage, I mean, I can, I can say stocks if you want. I don't think anybody would be. I mean, I invest in tech mostly. You know, for example, I invested in Rolls Royce when it was like went down to like 60. And now I took it out at, at 220, which was a very bad choice because right mm. now it's at 260, but whatever, you know. Um, however, in crypto, I think that's must, much more uh, um, important. I have around 15% in eGold. That is one of my biggest holdings. I mean, let's say next one is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, they are like same type. I am... Um, I, I always say that I have 15% of my portfolio in eGold and it's a lot. And uh, I do think it's a lot. However, I do have, I do have a lot of trust um, invested in the team and, and, and in Benny Minku. And uh, I, am, I am still 100% positive that they, they will do it and they will continue. And that's my sole expectation from them to continue to grind. You know, yeah. uh, I don't really expect miracles. However, uh, I don't really have in any other founder or project as much trust as in Multiverse X. So yeah, um, yeah. obviously that is also coming from cultural stuff, you know, that I'm also, uh, I'm Hungarian, but I'm from Romania. So stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. So I know, I know, I kind of know the, the mindset, right? I, I feel the mindset. Therefore, that's why I have this trust. Now, going forward, I just, I think I just tweeted like, Two days ago, I start to build my uh, my portfolio in gaming as well. I invested in uh, in in uh, Gala games. I am uh, I invest I, and also AI, for example, render uh, layer layer AI light token. It's very small, very risky. However, it just did like a seventy percent, so it's good. Uh, that was that was like a risky bet. Um, so- uh, I also invest in 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 shit coins. I have uh, Dogecoin and Shiba Inu, and I'm gonna buy Pepe as well, uh, because you know, just to have it, just in case. This the speculative trades are are something to discuss. It's one thing to yes acknowledge that they might be shit coins, but the herd mentality. As much as we want to say the mature move of the market is slow and steady growth, like. All those markets, shit coins, hype coins, whatever you want to call them, will continue to go out. And especially as a trader, such that you are on certain time frames, that's some um, key opportunity to kind of um, add to your yeah. positions. Which I'm curious, if you make profits, where are you putting those? Are you putting them into US dollar and going from there, or is your objective? I want to increase my number of Bitcoin, Ethereum, eGold, or some other cryptocurrency. Where are you taking your uh, I invest, yes, I, I invest everything. I reinvest everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it depends on the on the time where we are in the cycle. So right now, um, until the end of 2024, I will re- reinvest everything. Uh, depending where we are, you know, in the in the mini cycles, meaning that, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana category coins, and then smaller and smaller right? Because that's how the money just flows down. So it always depends on the narrative, what is what is picked up, what is hyped or what is coming, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's very important to know. Uh, but until the end of 2024, I reinvest uh, all the profits. And uh, specifically, do you have a methodology where you take those profits? Uh, yes, it's from the chart. 
Um, sorry, my explicit question is, let's say that your Pepe pumps 500%. Are you selling that for a fiat currency, US dollar, and allowing that to settle and then make your decision where you're reinvesting that? Or once you see those profits, once you see that increase, are you holding that or are you selling into Bitcoin because you might think that that's more stable or putting it into maybe a lower cap thing that you see higher room for growth? Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so it depends. It depends how much I invested before. Okay. Now let's just say I bought Pepe for two hundred dollars, right? And it just did a five x, as you said. That's already one thousand dollars. That is like, that is that is something which I I wouldn't want to just just give it back to the market, right? Because maybe I put it in another coin and it makes another five x. First of all, I don't sell everything. I never sell everything of a coin which already pumped because I always keep a moon bag. You know, you never know. Just right, right, just right. a small one. Uh, just to give you an example, I when when we had this meme, you know, hype uh, when Pepe just just went up crazy. I bought this chat coin uh, for two hundred, and it went up to I don't know five six 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 x something mm -hmm. like that and i took out like like 1000 something but i still left like 2 300 200 and something dollars worth of moonbag coin now it's worth like 8 dollars yeah yeah you never know maybe it could have gone even further you know yeah so absolutely. i always leave i always leave on the table you know just the opportunity i think the missed opportunity is 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 very bad. It's it's one of the worst, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you don't track yourself, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's the worst. <laughs> um, so yes, if I took profits and those profits are not a huge amount of money, I will find something for Digen again. You know, let's see. But if something went up, I mean, if we had a hype, something went up five, ten x, then we are not in an altcoin season, you know probably I don't buy it back very soon because I just don't think, I, I, I mean, I don't see it going, going up. It's very rare that something just goes up, comes down and goes up again even more. That is altcoin season shit, you know? And I don't think that we see that right now. Um, of course, I buy Bitcoin when it is down, uh, when, when it has a dip, when it's on, you know, support something like that i always check it with the chart however i also uh try to buy in in whatever industry i uh, i believe it's gonna go up which is gaming nowadays but obviously it can change in three months we, we might have a new something which appeared on the market yeah yeah all right, Sabi, it's been a fun conversation, lots to go over as always, but um, I want to move and just hear a little bit more about uh, your interest and involvement in Multiverse X. Um, of course, the Morningstar Ventures is associated, but has uh, investments, has their interests in, in lots of different things. Um, so let's just kind of begin um, shortly here as we close out the video, you know, an hour and a half in or so. Um, but yeah, wh when did you discover Elrond Network at the time, which of course the rebrand took place last year, as we uh, hopefully all know by now. Uh, but how did you find Elrond's network? Um, maybe it has to do with what you mentioned uh, being Romanian. Um, but uh, yeah, how did you discover it? And um, next question really is just ideas on on the development you've seen over the years. And as we sit in December 2023 on Multiverse X, what's standing out to you? What do you what are you getting excited about, especially with X Day number two happening um, in October two months ago at this point? Um, what's standing out to you? But um, one uh, first things first, how did you find Elrond Network? When did you find it? And um, why why have you developed this this trust and confidence with this layer one? Lots of questions there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know, so I know. how I found it? <laughs> well, the the story is not very romantic in a traditional way. My friend recommended it. We were bored. Uh, I was in England at that time, uh, and. I was just, you know, looking around, you know, learning the charts, stuff like that. And my friends, they came over and they say, Hey man, I bought this coin because I heard this guy on, on, on the radio in Romania. And yeah, I think that they are great. So just, just listen to them, you know? Yeah. And I was like, 
I just asked him, how, how much, for how much did you buy in? He told me the amount and I was, and I was very bored. It was 2020, <laughs> end of the year, something like uh -huh. that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to also buy for that amount. <laughs> and then I started to do the research. So nobody should start like this. <laughs> okay. This is a very important. Don't do not yeah. follow my lead here, but yeah, uh, it was recommended. I listened to, to Benny Minko in, um, in, in, in the radio, you know, talking about what, what he wants to do, you know, what they are planning, what is the problem, what are the problems? Half of it, I don't, didn't really understand, to be honest. Um, and because I was also at the beginning of the journey. Uh, and then I just started to see some, some other, you know, YouTube channels mentioning it. And I was thinking that maybe I should just dive in, you know, and I start to focus on this on this network uh on youtube because i didn't see content about it and i was thinking maybe that is also like a good thing because since i already invested you know like uh just as much as i invested in bitcoin by that time then uh, i should i should know a bit more about them and everything was just falling into into place uh i learned more and more about what are the problems what are the solutions you know the the blockchain dilemma and stuff like that. Uh, at that time, it was uh, talked about that by Coin Bureau as well, for example. And just started to create content about them. And in the meantime, I learned more about them and I listened to Benjamin Kumar uh, at all his interviews. And yeah, it just became like a, a habit. Uh, it also created like a bond, you know, with the community I had with people who followed me. Uh, start, they started to ask me questions. I started to study up and then the Launchpad projects, you know, Ride, Ethereum, so on, so on, Cantina Real. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's how this uh, relationship kind of things developed over time. So it was really just initially you got into it like anybody could have, talking with friends, hearing some speculation. But over time, um, it sounds like the communication and, and kind of the closeness that the core team had with the community is kind of what built that trust for you. Uh, let's just say that first of all, uh, the team, uh, the team gave gave me that that feeling that this was a good choice, mm. you know, buying in. So that that's the first thing. Okay, you cannot. I don't think you can build anything on on anything if, if you don't feel that, okay, this was a good choice and I should continue. And after that, obviously, uh, you know, with the videos, I also got a lot of support. I mean, can you imagine that the work I did, uh, I didn't really mention at all this on YouTube, but I was a design engineer. I designed lots of shit over the year. Uh -huh. So sometimes for weeks, I just put on my headphones, I was listening to music and I was I was, I was drawing something. I didn't speak too much, only, only the very, very, uh, you know, occasional meetings, which mm -hmm. are like, uh, how do you call it? Sorry, I am drawing a blank here. You know, you have to go. Um, so uh, from that, mandatory. you know, yeah, the mandatory ones. So from, from, from that style to go on camera, it was like a huge change, you know, and I don't think that anybody can do it if you get, if you get a lot of shit there, but I got a lot of support and sometimes, you know, it was just, I mean, a couple of the, I, I always remember some of the comments, uh, and, uh, for example, I did, uh, a video on the lunch pad on, on rights lunch pad, you know, and I didn't, I didn't, uh, get in, I didn't have any winning tickets and I was drawing, you know, the, the graph that, okay, it's going to be, it's going to pump and then it's going to dump and don't buy there. If you don't have, uh, you know, uh, winning tickets, just don't buy, wait until it settles, you know? Mm -hmm. And one guy said that, Hey man, I just watched your video before the lunch, like one hour before the lunch. And I decided not to buy and you just saved me a lot of money. I mean, that, those awesome. are the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are the best. So, um, yeah. Coming back to your question, because I just <laughs> went off a bit off topic. Um, I think, I think it just, lots of things came together, you know, and, um, and that is why I am here where I am right now with the multiverse X, uh, you know, support. I mean, not, I mean, me supporting them as I can, when I can and, uh, and, and the community obviously. And, and that's why I have a bigger chunk of investment from my portfolio in eGold than in any other altcoin.
Yeah. So between we'll kind of combine just for the sake of time, X day one and X day two, um, obviously these are both positive indications and confirms those ideas of feelings you had about the team from the start. What stood out to you uh, between the two? Um, and uh, if you have any comments on the rebrand itself away from Elrond Network to this idea of multiverse to the power of X, um, what what are your thoughts on the the development, um, kind of the main things that they've discussed in these X days? I think Multiverse X is a much more mature name or brand than Elrond because I mean, in the end, it's the Lord of the Rings, and I love yeah. that trilogy. I watched it many times. However, I also don't think that it should be the name of a project. So Mut Multiverse X is is fine for me. It's mm -hmm. not 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 the favorite, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I was a bit surprised. I didn't know what to what to expect. I didn't know about the rebranding, so it was like a. I didn't know how to take this. However, it wasn't something like, I don't like this. I saw many people <laughs> on Twitter, you know, that they, they think it's shit. Yeah. I don't think it's bad at all. I think it's much more uh, more mature and I think uh, it grew on us. So yeah, no complaints there. Um, regarding, I don't, regarding X day one, X day two, no, I wasn't on, X day, on the second X day. However, I I do see how much uh, the industry matured, okay, in this one year. I mean, if you just, if you just imagine, uh, the biggest news on first X day was the rebranding, uh, the X exchange, you know, the Max 2.0, tokenomics, uh, stuff like that. The biggest one on, uh, and, and also the products, right? The, the wallet export, or so on, so on. The biggest news uh, on the second one was the card, okay? Because everything just came together. Twistpay, mm -hmm. you know, with MasterCard, the invitees were very different. Uh, they weren't only, they were more like trade five, which also can raise questions, okay? So I can see, I can see um, Multiverse X as trying to do their own thing, but being partners with trade five, right? With traditional finance, with the government. And I think that is a good thing. And obviously I do hope that they will continue to do that. And at the same time, I also do hope that they will keep the, the DGEM part, you know, the crypto company part, the something which wants to revolutionize, you know, something which wants to bring something new. So totally. not to merge, okay? Just change them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so you, you mentioned it and also um, it's in your uh, your name, the Mex21. I've heard you talk about it a little bit. You mentioned it in the uh, new uh, X exchange that was announced at X day one. We've got uh, X exchange version three coming this quarter, uh, hopefully by the end of the month. Um, but uh, remind the audience, because I, I think I'm aware of your stance on the, the Mex21 movement. Um, but what are your thoughts on it? What you have Max to one in your name. What's what's that about? What can you tell us about Max to one? Well, Max to one for me is a is a boost of morale. I think mm, that's totally. that's how I take it, and uh, I think it was very much needed when you started it. I mean, you started it as I remember correctly. Yeah, and I think we had some some phases in this bear market when everybody was just just very very sad and depressed, and yeah. you know which wasn't great. And I think this Max to one, even though I don't think that Max will go to one in this bull market. Okay. So whatever can happen, we are in crypto, yeah. but uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, often when it's, it, it would get too good for too many people that thing probably won't happen. Okay. That is like a yeah. rule, of, rule of thumb, you know? Yeah. So, Max to one for me is a boost of morale. I still love when people, I mean, I just got a comment on Twitter that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably you're very smart because you have Max to one on your name, you know, like sarcastically. <laughs> and it's just great. I mean, I will keep it that I will keep Max to one there and it's going to stay until Max gets, gets to one. <laughs> and go. then I will say that I said it. <laughs> so, you, uh, but You'll be yeah. the new leader of Max to one. Yeah, I will take the torch from you. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, well, I, I so, appreciate yeah. that for sure. It was absolutely a morality boost for everybody. And to me, it very much showed the power of the underlying community that during the bear market, it was very quiet. But whenever the market moved such that, that it did, I didn't care about price, truly. What I cared about was just the objective movement and, and the strength that was revealed by that um I guess just movement, you know, the movement was real yeah. revealed by the movement, but um, yeah, man, that's, that's a good perspective to have. And it's funny how people will try to debate you on the mechs to one, whether it's possible or not. Um, but there is a video of yours dating back to early days of mechs where you compare it to Uniswap and not financial advice, but you do create the possibility or you say that perhaps um, 0 0.02 could be in the cards um, in the future, which is much drastically more realistic than mex to one. Um, but thoughts on putting hashtag mex to 0 0.02 in your name. And <laughs> I'm just teasing with you. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the, the mex token um, has has a lot of um, attributes to it that make it pretty interesting. But it always points back to that strength that it showed within the multiverse X community. Well, look, I mean, I, I just opened the chart of Max to USDC and it has... Uh oh, this video is going to be another hour. <laughs> yeah, five zeros, five zeros. So zero, zero, 002, that means like about 1000x, maybe 10,000x. But 10,000x is a lot. 1000x, we have seen it before. It's about plus 15 million percent. Yeah, yeah. So maybe not this bull run, but yeah, yeah. we will get there sometimes. Who knows? Absolutely. Cool. Well, the final question that I have for you before we wrap out, wrap up, that is, is one that you should expect. Um, so I'm curious, what is the multiverse in your viewpoint, Sabi? What is the multiverse? The multiverse, like um, multiverse, oh, in crypto or in general? I, I, I've been just, just asking. Just it vaguely? And seeing, yeah, vaguely, I think... generally, yeah. What do you think it is? How would you I think it? I think the multiverse for me in my life, in my life, is the different lives we, we live. Um, I think we are different at work. We are different when we are private, maybe when we are alone, maybe with the family, you know. Mm -hmm. We let's just say about me, you know, I I work in crypto now. I worked something very different before. It also means, and, and I'm on YouTube now, it also means that I had to adjust a lot, you know, uh, how, how I express myself, for example. Um, I also had to adjust a lot how I work. But in the meantime, my favorite things to do are sometimes just just go go out in the, in the nature, you know, where I'm, I'm just chill. Mm -hmm. So there is this two life, uh, which is one is I wake up on Twitter, on YouTube, scripting researching is just very high speed you know high pace just 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 breathing in the information even it's not even enough you know i sometimes feel that i would need like like 36 hours in a day and it still wouldn't be enough and on the on the other time you know when i just uh you know when i rest i just i just need to shut everything out so for me that is one multiverse yeah man that's uh, always fun to hear the perspectives. And I particularly liked the fact that yours really didn't even focus really on on tech or anything, rather just extrapolating um, um, among the different hats per se, or characters or just roles that we play in our lives, the different activities that we enjoy doing, being out in nature, being with our families. Um, whenever I first heard the name or not even the name, because we're not talking about multiverse X, just to be clear, the multiverse just idea conceptually, I conceptualized it by, you know, almost multi dash verse, like a verse to a song. And it's like mm -hmm. every verse of a song is going to have a different story, a different meaning, a different interpretation. Uh, and that's why I've been asking the guests of the show every time, because it's it's such a unique definition and some will extrapolate it into the idea of the metaverse because metaverse versus multiverse can sometimes be misconstrued but yeah man i, I agree with what you're saying there um, but whether i agree or not um i appreciate your your perspectives 
And uh, just want to kind of open it up for anything else you want to respond to or or share as we close out here. Um, but I just want to thank you for the time and the thought that you've given to responding to my questions and everything. Um, but yeah, any closing thoughts over anything that we've discussed during this time? Uh, well, first, thanks for having me. Uh, it was it was a blast. I, I really loved uh, to have this chat. Nothing, nothing much to mention. I think I've said everything I, I, I wanted. Oh, I hope that I answered your questions. Uh, and I think what I, my message is that we should always debate, you know, it's mm. just there is no one truth better yeah. that about crypto, you know, future crystal balls, you know, <laughs> other balls, you know, diamond balls. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's, it's, always, it's always good. And it's always, uh, you know, it comes with a big reward listening to somebody else's perspective, you know, and how somebody else sees that one certain thing. Because some might be here, might be here for, for the tech, you know, a developer is here and they are like amazed about the tech. Others see, you know, what can bring to people, you know, and it's, these are different perspectives and they need to meet in order to go forward. So, yeah. That's Beautiful. All. Beautiful, eloquent. Sabi, it's been really awesome uh, just sharing this conversation with you. Already looking forward to the next time I see you, whether that is over Zoom or sometime we might have to meet up in real life. Um, but also, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Um, for viewers out there, aside from, you know, dropping a like, commenting, and following Sabi on YouTube and his. Uh, rather two YouTube channels now and his Twitter account. Those links will be dropped below. Uh, but also we mentioned it way earlier in the video that we've got a interview that I did with, uh, or maybe we didn't mention it, but I interviewed Yusabi at the first X day last year. So, you know, if it was if it was a more popular YouTube account that I have here, I'd say, you know, get it to like, you know, a thousand likes or something like that. But just just drop a like and look out for the uh, video that we put out in the future. Sabi and I are going to be watching back that initial interview that we did when we met, responding to it and uh, kind of probably continuing the sort of dialogue that we had here. Um, nonetheless, Sabi, thank you again for your time. Um, just to give you one last opportunity, anything else you want to say, anything you want to shout out or shill? Well, thanks for shilling my channel and, uh, I really appreciate it. And I do hope that, uh, we will have a nice, nice bull run and many, many more conversations. Beautiful. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a great conversation and uh, looking forward to the next time. As we already said, I'm very bad at doing outros, so I'll leave it at that. Thanks again, and we'll see you later. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I had a really enjoyable time talking with Sabi during that conversation, and I look forward to chatting with him more on Twitter hearing his thoughts. Like I said many times throughout the video, I really value his perspectives, so be sure to follow him. Like and subscribe to this channel. We'll see you in the next one. Peace!